Good morning. Good morning, and as always, welcome to Niles First Christian Church, Disciples of Christ. How wonderful it is to be present in this place to hear again the story of good news. Uh, this time, luckily for us, presented, well, not by me, but by our youth, although I do have one small part. So it will be good to gather in this space, to hear again good news, to be encouraged for the work ahead, and to participate and anticipate for what is coming next. It is good to be here. You can see a few of the announcements uh, that we can name in our bulletin this morning. Uh, the first, uh, there is, uh, we are continuing to take orders for our poinsettia orders, uh, and we do have a, a special offering that will be taken today and next week. This is our uh, regional Christmas offering. This is the primary offering that sets the budget for the entirety of uh, the Christian Church Disciples of Christ and their individual regions. So anything that you give to the Christmas mission, the Disciples Mission Fund special day offering, in this case, the Christmas offering offering goes directly towards our regional ministries. If you're interested at all in what uh, the region is doing, there is a video that we have put uh, up on our Facebook page that was put together by the Reverend Alan Harris, who is our regional minister at the moment. Um, you can see in your bulletin that there's a few other things that we can name. Uh, thank you, everybody, that was able to take a name for our angel tree. Uh, we've collected them all, and they need to be in by this Tuesday. Um, there's still time for the Youth Can Food Drive, and I've been doing my best to move things from the female side over to the male side, but it seems like we are still losing. So we have one more week to make sure that we come out on top. Uh, of course, we encourage everyone to participate in that food drive. Uh, we also have a whole bunch of Christmas cards that are in the narthex right now on the table. Uh, these have been donated. Uh, we are asking everybody in this Operation Christmas card to take a pack and to mail it to anybody you want, some of our homebound folks 
or folks that you haven't seen in a while or anybody that needs to hear a good message, uh, make sure that you mention our church in it, Niles First Christian Church, Disciples of Christ, and wish them well. Um, we invite you to take that and to participate in it as you feel led. With all of these things, we find ourselves in this week of preparation of Advent, in the season of joy. May we be joyful this morning as we move to light our Advent candle. Let there be light. The light glowing from our Advent wreath is burning brighter. This radiance warms our hearts and fills us with joy. The Lord has done great things for us. Let us rejoice. Jesus says, I have come as a light into the world so that everyone who believes in me should not remain in the darkness. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Let there be light. Light three candles, see them glow, brightly so that all may know how three candles show the way, making our darkness bright as God's day. Those who lived in darkness have seen a great light. Let us pray. How, oh, how great it is, O oh God, that you bring brightness and light into our lives, that you provide for us illumination in the path that we are called to follow. Might we be joyful people, for we see the way to salvation and to life abundant. We give you thanks, O oh God. May our very lives be joyful expression. We pray these things through the Spirit and through the Christ. Amen. May we join together in our call to worship. Come and rejoice in God. In the midst of troubles and stress, God is near offering compassion. Let all the people praise God. Amen. I invite us then into an attitude of prayer. First of silent prayer, bringing forth those names, those situations that lie heavy on our hearts that cause us uh, to, to lack some joy in our lives, that we might bring them to God who surely knows, that we might be joyful in the good news that God provides, that we might rest assured that God is bringing light into our lives this morning and throughout our days. I invite us then to join in the morning prayer, to join together in the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. We gather here in this place, O oh God, to give thanks and praise to you. O oh God of time, we give thanks to you, for you are our beginning and our end. You who have spoke things into existence before there was, and you who will be after all has passed away. 
God of all people, we give you thanks and praise that you have come to this earth in the person that we prepare for and anticipate, Emmanuel, God with us. We give you thanks that you have come for all people, that we might all know your salvation, that we might all know your grace and your love, the ways that you permeate this creation through the person of your spirit, that we might never be alone, that we might always be with you, and that we might, in knowing that we have an advocate for ourselves, might advocate for each other, might be for each other, might live and serve each other as we seek to serve you, O oh God. Never-ending God, we give you thanks that we know that the current uh, brokenness of our society and of ourselves is not the way things will remain, but in you there is wholeness. In you there is hope. In you there is love and joy and peace. May they be more than candles of an Advent wreath this season, but might they be part of who we are. Might our foundation indeed be in you alone, O oh God, our beginning and our end. And where we have entered spaces where there is a lack of hope or peace or joy or love, might we be those that provide in those situations. Fill us up, Lord, that we might go out into this world and be people of hope and good news. Fill our cups that they might run over out of this building into the four corners of this earth. Indeed, from our doorsteps to the very ends of this world. Where we have failed, O oh God, or where our best attempts have, have fallen short, or where we have missed the mark and thought we were following you but have only followed ourselves, God forgive us. We seek you. We hope in you. And we love you, O oh God. Direct our paths that we might do your will in this world. Encourage us and strengthen us so that our work, our seed planting, might be watered and weeded by those around us. And may it be for the glory of your harvest, O God. For that is our hope and our assurance. That all that we hope for is that which you provide. Of all that we love is your love poured out upon this creation that your peace is not our own, but above all, a peace that is of the kingdom that your Son has taught us. Might we be joyful in it, O oh God. In all things, might we be joyful people. This is the calling that your Son has given us. And in those words, we seek to again give your Son praise and to speak to you as we have been taught when we say as one, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Our kingdom come, our will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power in the glory forever. Amen. I invite us then to hear our scripture reading from the 146th Psalm. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of gods, for his steadfast love endures forever. Oh, that's still a good one to read, but that's not the one we were looking for. The 146th Psalm. Everybody who was following along in your Bible knew what I was doing, right? All right. The 146th Psalm. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all of my life long. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortals, in whom there is no help when their breath departs. 
When their breath departs, they return to the earth. On that very day, their plans perish. Happy are those whose help is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keep their faith forever. who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens their eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. May God add a blessing to this and every reading of God's holy word. Might we hear good news here. started now. As we all know, the time of the blessed event has come. Jesus, the Son of God, has entered the world as a man in order to save the people from their sins. Gabby has already been sent to <coughs> Zachariah to tell him that his wife Elizabeth is going to have a son. Gabby, why don't you give us a report on the arrival of John? The announcement was a success. When I appeared to Zechariah in the temple, he was quite fearful of me. He even doubted that he and Elizabeth could have a child because they were old. What did you say then? I told Zechariah that my name was Gabby and that I stand in the presence of God. I went on to say that I was sent to tell him of the child that he will name John. And because he didn't believe me, I, he would not be able to speak until the day it happens. Excellent. Then the chain of events for the forerunner of Christ has been set in motion. John, who will be known as John the Baptist, will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. And he will make ready a people prepared for the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah, as was prophesied. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now it's time to grab the rest of the assignments. Gabby, you'll be giving the good news to Mary. George? You've been selected to go to the shepherds who've been chosen to hear the news of our Savior's birth. Congratulations, Angel. George, this is the most important assignment. I know you do a great job. Thank you, sir. Sue, this next mission is for you. For me? Yes. You'll be attending Joseph. Remember to use discretion and handle him gently. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Congratulations, Angel. 
Congratulations, Sue. Thanks, Fred. I'm so excited. Also, I need a volunteer to warn the wise men not to return to Herod. Let's see. Rachel, why don't you take this assignment? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Congratulations, Angel. George, I'm sending the Angels Choir Level 1 to go with you. Those shepherds will probably need extra encouragement. All right. I believe that's all for now. If anyone has any questions, please come and see me. You're dismissed. Yes, Fred? Did you have a question? Well, sir, I didn't get an assignment, and I'm not part of the Angels Choir Level 1. Did you have something for me to do? Sorry, Fred. Not this time. Maybe the next time I get the assignments, I'll have a job for you. If I do, I will personally send for you. Don't be sad, Fred. I'm sure you'll get your first assignment soon. Just be patient. George is right. Michael will put in a good word for you. I'm sure you'll get an assignment soon. I really wanted to be a part of the coming of Jesus. <sighs> well, like Michael said, maybe next time. a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be since I'm a virgin? The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she, who is said to be barren, is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord your servant. May it be to me as you have said. Can this really be? Will all that the angel told me come true? My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. 
She seemed like such a nice girl. I was told she was godly and righteous. Mary would have made a perfect wife. What am I going to do? A baby. She's going to have a baby. I, I, I can't let this get out. She's so young. She won't be able to handle the public disgrace. They're, they're probably going to stone her. I know, I know, I'll, I'll divorce Mary, but I'll do it quietly. Uh, no one must know why. I'll go see some old friends tomorrow. Maybe they can help me out. I, I'll sleep on it. I don't know. I've gone over this a thousand times in my head. A divorce is the best way to protect Mary. Thanks for stopping by, George. No problem. I had a little time before I had to make my appearance to the shepherds. Looks like you have to give Joseph a change of heart. Yes. Remember, Michael told me to treat him gently. What do you suggest I do to get his attention? Mm, I don't think a clap of thunder or a sharp flash of lightning is the way to go. Well, how about a burst of trumpet music? That can be very effective. Yes, that's true. There's nothing like the sweet sound of a trumpet, but perhaps th th this isn't the place for that. What about just a very bright light to wake him up? That might work. I'm new to this myself, but you don't want to scare Joseph. He might faint. You're right. I didn't think of that. Well, Sue, I'm afraid that it's time for me to go now. I'm sure that you will pick just the right way to deliver your message. Thanks for the vote of confidence. Subtle. I need to be subtle. I know. I'll tell Joseph now, while he's sleeping. He won't be frightened that way. Joseph. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. What is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. There. Now he will know what to do. Mission accomplished. keeping watch over their flocks by night. Are you ready to eat? Not yet, I. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Glory, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, peace to men, on whom his favor rests. Did you see 
Did you just see what I just saw? I don't know about you guys, but I have got to see this. What do we do about the flock? Our father will be very angry with us if we just drop everything and head off to Bethlehem. When our father hears that a host of angels comes to tell us that a long-awaited Messiah has been born, I think he will agree with us. He's right. Why do you suppose the angels came to us? We're nobody, just poor shepherds. You would think that the angels would have come to the high priest instead of us. It is strange. There must be a reason why we were told this miraculous news. We should go as soon as we can. Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. Yes, let's go see this child. issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn. A son, she wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. We are Magi from the East. Where is the one who has been born, King of the Jews? We have saw his star and have come to worship him. I have brought the king a gift of frankincense. of the coming of the Messiah has been fulfilled. All the angels did a wonderful job. Yes, they did. I just wish that I could have played a role in the birth of Jesus, like Gabriel, George, and Sue. I know you did, Fred. If you'd let me, I could still give service to our Lord. I could go back and see the shepherds. I could go over to Bethlehem. I could go anywhere. And Fred, Fred, do you remember when I told you that I would send for you if I had an assignment for you? Yes, I remember. Well, I've heard of a very special assignment that I think would be perfect for you. You have? How good are you at rolling stones? <laughs> stones, sir? Yes, Fred. There's this really big stone in front of a tomb. I think we could use your help with
walking home on a cold and wintry day. Took a shortcut through the woods and I lost my way. It was getting late and I was scared and alone. But then a kind old man took my hand and led me home. How appropriate on this God at Sunday, this Sunday of joy, that we have so many individual reasons to be joyful. To hear the singing of our kids and some of our better singers in the congregation. 
to see the story played out. This is, this is one of the few times in Advent where we get to hear the Christmas story in its fullness because normally this is a, a time of preparation. But here, here we have dispensation to be joyful, to celebrate what has happened two millennia ago that gives us hope and joy and peace. I love the representation. Uh, the, the four magi I, I really enjoyed. <laughs> How nice it is that we can gather to be reminded of what we are when we gather together, that we are more than ourselves, that we are more than an individual, but we, in this gathering, are a part of the body of Christ. One body, but individually members, each of us with unique skills and gifts that allow us to grow the body of Christ in this world, to serve in very specific ways, to give that is unique to us to bring forth with the Spirit's presence in our lives the realm of God that Christ has taught us about. What more reason do we have to be joyful than to be part of that story, that story that, that started at the beginning of time and continued 2,000 years ago and is still going on today. Here we listen for God speaking now. Here we gather around that table that was celebrated two millennia ago, but it still is real and as fresh and still presided over by our Christ. How good is it that we can be at this table where none are sent away, where all are welcomed, where all are fed, where all are provided grace beyond measure. How good is it that we can be here? What reason we have for joy in this place. May we celebrate that joy in this table. May I hand on to you the way that it's been handed on to me. That on the night that Jesus last ate with friends and with family, as he rejoiced in those last few hours and days of his life, he took a loaf of bread, and after having blessed it, he broke it, saying, this is my body broken for you. Whenever you eat it, eat in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took a cup, and in the same way, gave thanks, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant shed in my blood. Whenever you drink it, drink in remembrance of me. For as often as we have an opportunity to share bread, to share cup, to join in song, to remember the incarnation in our lives, we remember what Christ has done for us for this entirety of creation. And we will preach this good news in hope until Christ comes again. Amen. So I invite you with the elements that you have to gather that bread and to partake as Christ's body broken for you. And in that same way, to take cup or grape or representation of that new covenant and to partake as Christ's blood shed for you. Will you pray with me? As we gather at your table in this Advent season, dear Lord, may we remember that beyond the songs and lights, there is a stable. And that stable marks the beginning of a journey that leads to an upper room and across beyond. We ask your blessing on these symbols of that great love that made the journey with our Lord. As we partake, we pray that that spirit of love may journey with us this season into your world. In your Son's name we pray. Amen. I didn't get any wings. But anyway, Heavenly Father, thank you. For you can satisfy our every need. Your word says that we should give the honors to you. So accept our offerings a gift of worship just for you. May we join together in our closing hymn, Angels from the Realms of Glory.
hear then our benediction. Go with the joy of the Lord on your lips. Go with the peace of Christ in your hearts. Go with the strength of the Holy Spirit in every step you take. Go with God. Amen.